It was the last week of October. The leaves were giving their last fiery dance before leaving the trees. The sun was slowly setting and we were soon to be finishing work after a long week. Hi. You nearly finished? Yes. I was thinking it feels a little bit strange um, that it's getting dark. It's nearly seven o'clock and we're just preparing to go out for a trip. It was Friday night and we had 20 miles to cycle. In less than 48 hours, we'd be cycling the same route back home in time for work once again. We'd heard an ancient local tradition was being celebrated and this would be our only chance to check it out. We don't normally leave in the dark and it was a short window, but we'd regretted missing rare opportunities like this in the past and we didn't want to make the same mistake again. So the weather, the night is actually beautiful. Yeah, it feels quite mild, but um, still. And this is a completely different experience for us. Yeah, I don't think we've ever loaded up to go out in the dark. <laughs> no. It was just after 9 p.m. We closed the door to our warm home and pedaled off into the darkness. Perhaps a little apprehensive at first, but the night cycling on empty back roads lit up by the moonlight and with slow falling autumn leaves coming down, it all turned out to be very, very peaceful. We pedalled slowly and the miles slipped away much quicker than expected. This weekend was a bit of a mystery to us and we were very excited. But it was the end of a long week. It was now midnight and we were exhausted. So it was a nice little after dinner, after work ride. Yeah, I'm knackered. I'm very, very tired. The palace is set up. Palace is set up. We're ready for bed. Yeah. And we will like, give you a bit more of a filling in about what we're doing Yeah. in the morning. In the morning. Over the last 10 years, we've spent a lot of time moving around, which we love, but it's also meant that we've not really had the chance to set roots in any kind of community. And that's something we have really missed. And this time around in the lakes, we said we're gonna do things differently. Yeah, we want to change that. Not seen you just like that for a while. <laughs> Where's all the spandex at? <laughs> the winter droving happens each October in the market town of Penrith. It celebrates the darker half of the year and marks the tradition of clocks going back and farmers droving their animals to town for the final market of the season. We're walking in. We're nearly there. Yeah. You excited? I am excited. We are here. Ready? Ready. Let's explore. A magical celebration of rural life, food, fun, masquerade and fire. If we wanted to get a sense of local Cumbria life and community spirit, this was the perfect place to start. And I'll be honest, it wasn't what we were expecting. We were thinking it would be similar to a farmer's market, but this was definitely much quirkier. And we loved it. One of the things that was really catching our attention was all of the street performers. There were some really sort of unique and quirky performances. And there were quite a few where they're in these big obvious kind of stage sections. But then there are others where there are more pop-up ones and you couldn't really tell if they were part of the performance or if it was just people on the street. Yeah, there was one act that was sort of these three guys that were called the carpenters and it was an odd concept that they were trying to lay one red carpet in front of another but they were sort of acting quite drunk and sort of falling over unsuspecting members of the public and some people got really into it and absolutely people loved it. really didn't like it at all. <laughs> they were like, no, do not involve me in your act whatsoever. It was hilarious. A little perusal. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, it's amazing. I think there's some really funny So much like quirky little things going yeah, on. Yeah, really quirky things, lots of music, it's really, really fun. Yeah. Cheers. Follow our ears. Yeah, this way. It was absolutely amazing having all these different music stages you could just follow your ears and enjoy. And it was really, really nice seeing so many other people enjoying it too. The day seemed to fly by, and before we knew it, the sun was beginning to set. And this is where things seemed to become even more animated. 
But it's really nice just to be in this hustle and bustle of it again because we're so far away from that almost all of the time. And we love Jimmy, we love the tranquility in the hills, but... The vibrancy of life. Yeah, you've got kind of all of your senses, loads of sights and sounds and smells. And people all around. Yeah, people from different walks of life and just yeah. diversity and so many interesting things going on. As night settled in, it felt like a long week and then late cycle was catching up with us. But we were just getting to the climax of the night. <laughs> so we're waiting for the procession. We are. Everyone queues quite early, so we're all queuing and we think it's coming. For centuries, farmers would drove their animals long distances to reach market. And this has really defined local identity for rural market towns like Penrith. The link connecting people, landscape and animals. 400 years on, blending the old and the new, it was really beautiful to watch a celebration in homage to the ancient tradition. We were absolutely exhausted, but we felt very lucky to get an insight into our local heritage, and it felt like a little step towards a community that we've both been missing. Okay, festivities are over. So, we are cream crackers. Yeah, that cycle yesterday has polished me off, so we're gonna wonder and we're back to back our to tent. tent. But that was amazing. It was amazing. <laughs> and have a few snacks. Hit the hay before we cycle back, back. home and back to work. <laughs> Put the heating on, I'll get the tea, oh, tea brew. Okay. Winding down with Satsumas. <laughs> and the rugby world cup final. <laughs> and though we didn't realise at the time, this trip would have one last surprise left in store for us. We were both exhausted and had to leave early to get back for work. But I'd also seen we were right next to a beautiful woodland with the castle. Today is, the clocks have gone back and we've got an extra hour in bed, but my body clock is pretty used to waking up early anyway. So I woke up at about 5.30. I was like, I really should try and get a bit more sleep. But then this woodland is so nice. And it feels like it's just almost at the peak of its like autumnal colours. So I may as well come out and make the most of it. And it's absolutely incredible. Sarah was knackered, but it was so beautiful, I thought she'd appreciate being woken up to come and explore. But I tend to get a bit distracted with my camera and by the time I got back to the tent she had already been awake for some time. I'm sorry I left you. Say you should be, you left me for a long time. But we can, uh, we can go back and walk along there, or we can cycle along there. Yeah, I'd like to. We set back off to explore for the little time we had left and I had a little making up to do. But all was immediately forgotten after spotting these guys two beautiful otters playing in the river besides us. In 48 hours, we'd cycled through the night to celebrate an ancient tradition, had become more connected with our local community. We'd spotted otters, beautiful autumnal woodlands, and now we'd found a castle. Hold it, hold it. All things we easily could have missed if we decided 48 hours wasn't long enough or even if we just stayed in bed this morning. It was pretty hard to tear ourselves away from this woodland, but now it really was time to go home. Less than 48 hours later and we are on the walk for work. <laughs> we cycled back, exhausted, but really content. 10 miles out of 20. Halfway there. Halfway there. 
With such a short time window, it's a kind of thing we easily could have missed. But we definitely regret the things we don't do, way more than the things that we do. Looking back, I'm confident we'll remember a beautiful 48 hours, not being tired for work afterwards. Bodies heal, energy replenishes, and it is cliche but very true, life is short and I think you've really got to make the most of it whilst you can. So here's to 48 hours and finding a community. And this is a little message to you. We both really wanted to say a huge thank you to Massive. everyone who has recently subscribed and has watched our videos because our summer and spring cottage video has just done so well, it's blown us away, it's yes. amazing. Beyond our wildest dreams, it's absolutely incredible. Uh, I think it really means a lot to us because that was like a really important special time in our life and sharing that video and connecting with loads of people was really quite heartwarming to see, it's really meant a lot to us. We've got to meet lots of new people in the comments and talk to like-minded people and hear about people's own experiences which is another aspect that we both really enjoyed. And off the back of that we've had loads of really interesting questions uh, yeah. asked to us and because we are very close to hitting 10,000 subscribers, yeah, which, which is, is amazing. A huge, huge milestone. So we thought to celebrate, we would do a Q&A where we compile all of those questions and any other questions you may have. Yeah, so if you do have anything you'd like to know about us or our plans or the house, the cottage, the bikes, Everything at all. then just drop a comment in the video here and we will add them to the Q&A. Thank you so much for watching till the end. And uh, thank you so much for all of your support and just being amazing. And we are really looking forward to answering all of your questions in the upcoming Q&A. We will catch you in the next video. See Bye. ya.